Hello, my mathematicians. This is Miss Foster with a special invitation for this coming Friday. Daniel in fourth grade has asked if I would please do a special class on linking together 90 origami Sonobe units. These types of units that we have taught you at school are called Sonobe units. And a group of students in both second and fourth grade and some third graders have asked to do this. Now, we have a week to prepare. I wanted to let you know ahead of time. You are welcome to join it's during my office hours and I will send you the link. But um, you have to be ready because this is so hard. So this is what you see on the screen underneath me is part of what you need to do to prepare. I'm just going to go over a few key points and then I'm going to show you the last things. So if you're going to come, you have to have 90 of these units. You can't be folding them on that day. You have to have them done. And these units must be precise and symmetrical with razor sharp creases, you guys. No window. Very pointy and almost no window right there. That's what we're going for. Really be picky with yourself because, oi, this is so hard. Sorry, my dog is barking. Okay, so another thing you need to do is you need to have made plenty of 30 unit icosahedrons like this, where you will have one, two, three, four, five pyramids around one vertex. If you have not done this more than once, my friend, you are not ready. And I want you to be ready, but you've got to do this first. I have two of them that I made in the last week so that you'll need that familiarity. Uh, finally, you're going to be doing, we are recommending that we do some gluing. Uh, what Daniel and I have found, and it took me a long time to succeed, it took Daniel, he couldn't get it together, is just like on the 30 unit one, these underneath pyramids, they get dragged down for, by gravity and they begin falling out like that. And so it's really easy for the units to slip out from each other. So in just a moment, you're going to be looking at my table and I will show you how to glue the base and what we call pinwheels. Now, if this doesn't work for you, if you need help with some other thing on origami, please send me a note either by email or on Seesaw. But if you are in second and third grade and using Seesaw, please drop the note in the math extension folder. Hey guys, if you're up for this, I can't wait to see you on Friday. Bye bye for now. And welcome back friends. I took a moment to put together a base to show you. Um, so the 90 unit uh, structure begins exactly the same way as the 30 unit structure. And so I just made this crab shape is what we call it at school with one, two, three, four pyramids on it. And I think it might help us a little bit if you already have made a base like this and also a top or a cap. So this will be the top that will go right on top of it, but it can also be the base. Now the reason I'm going to be gluing mine is right here. I hope you can see where this unit, I had it all tight, but just it just began sliding around when I began moving things. And that's why I've decided I'm going to glue some things ahead of time. So this is what we're using for both the base and the top. And I'm going to show you how to make a pinwheel in just a moment, and that's the one I will show gluing on. And if you really want to be successful, I think you're going to want to do some gluing before we have our class on Friday. And we're back. So the kind of glue that you're going to want to use, you could use a glue stick. I haven't experimented a lot with that, but I think it works well on origami paper. Or just very simple Elmer's glue. Now the white stuff, what they call school glue here, um, it dries clear. The clear stuff slides around a little bit more at the beginning. It also dries clear. So really, either one or a glue stick is fine. Now, a pinwheel uses five of these units. But, and it's kind of like making that base I showed you, but each pyramid will only have two units in it instead of three. It's like getting there. The way you do it is you're just going to begin sliding up pockets into points but you're going to want to try going around a certain vertex. And even I am feeling a little twisted right now. I've chosen all blue ones for this. Let's see. 
Can I do this right here? I sure can. And you can even see while I've been trying this, and I've done this quite a bit before, that every time I move them, the units can sort of fall apart. And for me, when I was showing this the other day to Daniel, it didn't take much to get them to fall apart, like they just did right there. And I've just put it all back together for you. Now, you're going to need to make 10 of these pinwheels. And the reason I'm going to recommend you glue them together is that then we are going to actually link them together with more units. Sometimes, so this has one, two, three, four, five pyramids going around that vertex. But we are sometimes going to have six units going around a vertex, which means all of that kind of surface, lack of surface tension and gravity pulling down will really be a, something to contend with. So if I want to glue these together, what you're going to do is we're just going to put a dot of glue on the point. Whoa, that was even a little bit too much. I don't know, can you even see that? It's so, it's tiny, guys. We really don't need very much of this. Not much at all. So I'm just putting a teeny tiny smear of glue on that point, and then I'm going to put it back into its pocket. Now, when I do that, I want to be as precise as possible. Because if I let it be there, then that will make a gap and it will be something I can't fix later. I love Elmer's glue because I don't know if you noticed, I just eased that out a little bit to show it to you and I can still push it back in. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room, but after a while it dries stiff. So that's good because you'll have the strength to hold it there. So here's another point. I've got some glue on my finger. Oh, can you see the shininess there? It's just a teeny tiny bit, and I'm going to slide it all the way in its pocket. But Miss Foster, your pockets don't look like my pockets. Well, there are two different styles of uh, Sonobe units. The one that this one has, I don't know if you can see that extra fold right there, that's the one I teach you at school, and I taught you that one because it's easier to link those. So um, I'll have some of those and some that don't have that extra little fold, they all fit together with each other and either kind is totally fine. So once again, I got the glue on there. I'm kind of really looking on the folds here to see is everything snuggled up together, very parallel, very adjacent, very precise. Aha, here's another one. I'm just gonna give myself one dot of glue on there. Doesn't take a lot. And slide it into its pocket. Now, like I said, one of the things I love about Elmer's glue is that um, it will dry very, very stiff, but it also can be very, very messy. <laughs> and once it dries, yeah, you'll be good to go. So just a little dot on there. The other thing about Elmer's glue is it does, it gives you that flexibility at the beginning, but then it, it needs a moment to set, to kind of adhere and soak in before it really locks in place. That gives you some flexibility. I'm noticing, don't know if you can see it, but right here, I didn't quite get that precise. So I'm just taking this moment in the middle of my vertex there. I want that to be as tight as I can possibly get it. And then I just wanna let this rest for a while, maybe while I glue another one so that the glue can set. So that's a pinwheel, you need 10 of those. And I would do the exact same thing with the base that I made. You will need two of these, two bases and 10 pinwheels. You're going to need another 20 free units to link all of this together. So happy folding, my friends. Happy gluing. Whoa, I'm, I'm so scared to do this, but we're going to give it a try. And if we don't get it this year, guys, you know, you know I'm going to do this with you in the fall promise. I can't wait to see you on Friday. Bye-bye for now.